Well, good afternoon there. And that's a view of Nunny Castle. Nunny is a tiny little village in Somerset near to the market town of Froome. And I'm really inspired to talk to you about a TV show called The Good Place. It's certainly been incredibly popular in the UK and I'm sure in many other parts of the world as well. And so, why am I speaking about it? And let's look at the shamanic. This is a deep di shamanic dive into the good place. And first of all, great gratitude for Michael Schur, the originator and creator, on all the people that took part to make it the extraordinary show it is. So I've literally just come back from Tenerife and last night there I was watching season four, the last two episodes. And I didn't realize at the time, but these two episodes do very much belong together. So there's so much to unpack here, it's almost a bit of a where do I start? So is this something you want to check out on Netflix or by whatever other means it is that you use to watch TV? It has come so highly recommended by everyone, including me. In terms of shamanic development, there's so much there in terms of spirituality, there's massive amounts. And indeed, I gather that Michael Schur is a really extraordinary creator about that to me, there is absolutely no doubt. So let me see if I can access some of the things that particularly to mention to you. So, with the premise that when people die, they get to either go to the good place or the bad place, that's what the show's apparently about at first glance and how everyone gets to go to the bad place, not the good place, because of an administrative cock-up, which is that's like a tiny bit of the backstory. And finally, by season four, the beginning of the... Uh, sorry, by the end of season four, they finally get to discover where the good place really is and get to go there. So, in the bad place, you're tortured for all eternity. So it's a fairly obvious thing that that's going to be a grim experience. In the good place, you can have anything you want. You have the ability to manifest absolutely anything you want, instantaneously. And you can do this on your own or with others. You can manifest anyone you wish to join you on this incredible journey. And by the time our four heroic characters plus our fifth character who happens to be a demon when they finally arrive in the good place and they see these people having an amazing time at first of all it looks wonderful and then one of them talks to one of the characters of friends um whatever her name is can't remember and says oh it's so amazing and she says oh it is and then she says that's right yeah because her interest is philosophy but she's become a total dumbass and the reason why is because there has been no stimulus to grow. So that's, the, that's kind of one of the central premises of the show at this point. Here I am creeping into Nunny Castle, as I say always. So this fundamental premise is the idea that if there is nothing that stimulates you, that pushes you, that gives you the reason to struggle, then what happens is you just end up having an eternity of having good fun. And it becomes so mind-numbingly boring that the people lose their creative ability to lose and end up becoming like a bunch of dumbasses. That's really what the story of the film is saying. Which means, and it's like huge shock horror for all people in the world who have never really had any experience of good times going on for any length of time, which is this. And you can see it amongst the rich. Simple question. Do rich people strike you as being extraordinarily happy with all their wealth? Well, let's just cut to chase. That's not what I pick up. I pick up quite the opposite. In fact, they seem to be pretty miserable, dismal people, a lot of them. So, that in a sense is echoing the theme of 
of the show. And so this is it really. To be tortured for all eternity, yeah, we get how horrible that is, but what the show is trying to make really clear is that to have an eternity of being able to do anything you want. And they literally do say well, like my thing constant ongoing orgasms all the time now as I'm talking to you on the characters actually says so it's like it isn't what it's cracked up to be. Which means that to have nothing but hell is horrific and to have nothing but good times with no challenges whatsoever is that's right you guess it equally horrific in its own rather surprising way. So the show then leaves us with the really big question that if this is the case, what is the answer? Because they gather that you want to do something about the terrible plight they find all these people in, in the good place. And what they do in the end, is they say, what we'll do is we will create a situation whereby here they are, they can do anything they like, they can go through these special green doors and manifest anything they want for however long they want, but we're going to give them an archway. And if they choose to go through this archway, it's the end. It's the end of being in the good place. It's the end of everything that they have ever experienced. And should they go through that doorway, there won't be any coming back, and they'll be stepping into the mystery. And for those of you waiting for the shamanic connection, well this is it, isn't it? Because you see, from my point of view as a shaman, what I know is that life is a mystery. Always, all the time. So I got back from uh, two weeks in Tenerife last night. And when I arrived, I had this really... I just felt, what the hell am I doing here? I felt absolutely dreadful. I had absolutely no idea why. I felt the urgent need to ground myself in something practical. I went to the supermarket to buy some food just to kind of do something to kind of attempt to connect me with where I am now. And I still felt really weird. And then about a couple of hours later I picked up my phone and I noticed that there was a message. My mother yesterday, at about five in the morning, had done one of the weird things she does, which is she puts her legs into the arms of her cardigan and she was sitting down and at a moment she got up and fell over and she injured her head, broke her wrist and when they did a CT scan they discovered that she's actually got bleeding in the brain and that in fact there was a new bleed but there was also a chronic bleed that had been going on for some considerable time. So I didn't know any of that was going to happen when I got back off the flight yesterday and it was only my shamanic senses of mm, okay I feel absolutely ah that gave me any clue at all I had no reason to feel so ah until I got the message and so I've just been the visitor now and I mean she's 91 and she looks about 10 years older than she did two, two weeks ago so that is like a huge shock for me to process and take in but I, this is not my point my point is Although it's easy to say, well, isn't that awful? And what a shame that had to happen. Actually, no, this is the whole point, isn't it? Life is a mystery. We are living this extraordinary mystery. And that's actually what makes life so fascinating, so enticing, so exciting, so moorish, that brings us back over and over again to experience lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, which is what a lot of us have chosen to do. So this is my first take on this extraordinary show. It is really highly recommended. And what I would say is, especially season four, to season four, the last two episodes, you'll be exposed to ideas which will cause you to go into a deeply introspective process. And shamanic, this is a really great thing to do. So just to reiterate my conclusion, life is a mystery. The fact that life is a mystery is what makes it so amazing, so extraordinary and so moorish. And so, whatever happens, that's what it's all about. Thank you very much.